Hello, hello, hello. Happy, happy, happy official World Octopus Month. Well, I guess it's just the whole entire month. Uh, October is Octopus Month, and we are joined by no other than Cy Montgomery, the New York Times bestselling author of The Soul of an Octopus. If you don't have this book, you should find this book. It's incredible. Uh, it got me started on my fascination. Welcome, Sai. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I love the chance to address the nation. <laughs> awesome. So yes, we just wanted to come to you live, answer some questions as everybody is tuning in. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. We love to watch. We have um, members from all over the world uh, following us at Octonation because there are octopus species all over the world. Uh, they're in every single ocean. They're along every single coastline. Um, depending on where they live in the ocean, they have a unique superpower that allows them to thrive in their environments. Um, but what does your day look like today, Sai? How are you celebrating World um, or Octopus Month? Boy, so hard to decide. <laughs> um, what will I do? Jeez. Actually, um, the greatest celebration is to be able to talk to the nation and be with other people who appreciate these, these fabulous creatures who just crack open our world with awe. Yes. And if you are watching too, make sure that you uh, share this stream so that more people can find it. Um, we are having some technical difficulties earlier, but we are here. We, we wanted to go live with you and just talk octopus. So if you all have any questions, uh, if you have any questions about the book, The Soul of an Octopus, um, I know that some of you have just recently read the book. Um, and so um, I wanted to bring you Cy Montgomery herself. I always tell people when we're out, um, I'm just like, Cy Montgomery is like the Beyonce of octopus people. I'm like, she's like, <laughs> our, she's like the person that we look to, you know, when things are going on. And the media looks to you too. Um, you um, know, you the, are the Octo King, as I always call you. I, I like I like being behind the scenes. Um, I like really I like really putting our scientists forward and um, the people that we work with. We got people from Houston, Texas. We have Oregon, Branson, Missouri. Those of you who are tuning in, let us know where you're watching from. Um, but yeah, so I was just saying that the media reaches out to you very often uh, when there's a, a breaking story when it comes to octopus. And there's one that's going viral right now, of course. Um, and it's that uh, female octopuses throw things at males that har are harassing them. So what did you think about that one? Well, I mean, of course I can identify and it's completely reasonable behavior. I mean, sexual harassment, as we all know, is is no good. Right. And um, for an octopus, as most people know, females don't start mating when they're young and continue this for decades, as as we do. They do it once at the end of their lives which is perfectly appropriate when you consider how Aristotle rather accurately described the mating act of an octopus. <laughs> you don't want to do this that much because it involved, in his words, um, the male inserting his penis in her nostril, <laughs> which is pretty much what actually happens. And, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do that till pretty much the end of my life personally. And if someone were trying to do that when I didn't feel like it, I would chuck some silt too. But what's so <laughs> is what I loved about this, this is another bit of amazing news to come out of Octopolis, which as many of among the nation know, is just a hotbed of octopus news. It's an aggregation of gloomy octopus known as oct they're octopus tetricus. They're not really gloomy. They just have big eyes. They're probably in a very good mood most of the time but it's an unusual aggregation of octopuses. And Peter Godfrey Smith and his colleagues have all kinds of video cameras set up to, to capture the behavior of the octopuses all the time. And when they first saw these females chucking silt and sand and shells at the males, they, they weren't absolutely sure that they weren't just randomly throwing stuff around which I think is hilarious because mm -hmm. people don't just randomly throw things around. They were obviously doing, but they, now octopuses do sometimes randomly throw things around as do we occasionally, but when they're chucking silt, one thing that I loved that they discovered is that they, they use different arms to do it. Then 
they use for other tasks. I think they use the right two arms, am, am I right? Uh, as yeah. opposed to the front two arms, which are mostly used for, for manipulating objects, but they use the right two arms. In fact, there we go. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's a very specific use of arms for very specific task look and at that too works. she I mean, and they can um what's what, what people don't know is that you know with jet propulsion they can blast off at a pretty high speed and so her you know using her siphon to jet um a, a, a stream of water um uh and create a current that blasts you know silt all over this guy i mean you, you have to know that she's that's a that's a pretty that's a speed that is hitting that guy right in the face and he doesn't want anything to do with her after that. He's like, okay. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, that, and thank you for pointing that out, Warren, because they aren't just chucking stuff like like I would throw something. Uh-huh. Um they are picking up the silt and then using their jet to blast it even further than they could throw it. Mm -hmm. So it is a really powerful, you know, it's it's like it's like fire hosing the mail away with all this this junk anyway <laughs> yeah that you can see like the siphon that's i think that's what they're, they're pointing out here is that they're pointing out the siphon blowing this and uh and seeing like all that just debris and stuff that he has because what's really interesting about them too um the specific species i mean because octopuses they just have all their really unique things is that they really create these gardens, you know, um, the, and the, the, you know, the octopus garden essentially by the people. Ringo Starr was yeah, right. Star. Yeah, I mean, you see that they, um, when they eat uh, a shell or a bivalve or, you know, or a crab or anything, they kind of decorate their dens with these, all these things. And so when she blasts these debris or whatever, um, it's basically all of her like kind of discarded prey items, which makes it a, a little bit more morbid, but also really cool. <laughs> well, it's like chucking garbage at someone, you know, yeah. like throwing rotting tomatoes at the bad, you know, actor on on in vaudeville. People were afraid of that. Yeah, it's like chucking garbage at the guy that, that that's annoying you. Hey, I, hey, I Jamie, love this. I we got people. Too. We got people saying hi in the chat. Hey, what's going on? Oh yeah. We got, um, hello uh, from South Carolina. Hi, Maria. Uh, Maria says, octopuses are my favorite invertebrate, but I've never met one. What's it like to interact with such an intelligent creature and how are they handled in aquarium settings? Oh, gosh. Oh, Maria, I wish you could come with me and Warren. Ah, well, I'm sure she would love to. We, yeah. We'll have to do something one day. Well, I, I love the fact that someone so alien and so different is able to one to recognize our faces their faces are very different their eyes are almost like teletubbies the part of the octopus everyone thinks is the head is not the head it's like the torso and the head is below that with the eyes and their mouths are located in their armpits and yet an animal like this can look up through the water and find your face and recognize your face and remember your face and this was the experience that i first had when I met my the, the first octopus that I ever touched, whose name was Athena at New England Aquarium. And I was astonished to see how interested she was in me. She turned bright red with excitement and she boiled up out of the water. And I could see her eyes just lock into mine. And then her arms started coming up, reaching with those gorgeous white sensitive suckers. And so naturally I wanted to plunge my arms in to meet hers. Mm -hmm. And when I did, she covered my skin with her suckers, tasting me and feeling me at the same time. And I realized that, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't like this um, if they didn't know what was happening, but I could definitely feel the, the, the curiosity um, of this intelligent animal. And I was delighted to provide her with something interesting in her day. And she certainly provided me with something interesting for my day. And this began a love affair with octopuses that started in, oh gosh, spring of 2011 mm -hmm. and continues to this very day and resulted in, in my book. And I've written two other books for younger people about octopuses. And um, I've gotten to know, I even had an octopus named after me at New England Aquarium. <laughs> I remember Cy. I actually got to meet, that was the first time that I met you, was when I met you with Cy the octopus at New England Aquarium. 
And I was she was a like, great octopus, wasn't she? Yeah, and I, I, I didn't really know what to do with myself because it was such like a monumental moment for me reading <laughs> Cry with Cy Montgomery. And I was just, I was casually there and trying to be cool about it, but I was like <laughs> freaking out because, I mean, obviously you know how much you mean to me from the standpoint of like starting off Octonation, the largest octopus fan club. But what many people don't know about me is I had that very similar experience from the standpoint of there's something about the way the octopus, if you're, you know, a, an empath or a highly sensitive person, or, you know, you can just, when you look at somebody, you get kind of like emotional or you just feel that with an octopus, um, the way I kind of explain it is if, you know, I have a German shepherd, she's, she's kind of laying down right behind me. And you know, when um, a, an animal kind of looks at you and you can tell that they're thinking something, um, you, you might not get that with with some animals when you go to the aquarium, but when you um, if, if you have a chance to see an octopus and the octopus kind of like looks down uh, at you from, you know, maybe the den or something like that, you just feel there's something going on, like there's something going on in there. It's it's looking at me just as much as I'm looking at it, uh, at it or him or her. Um, and there's just something that happens. And I remember having that first experience when I was seven, but really didn't know what to do with my love for the octopus because there were, weren't that many resources. I was really surprised that for kids, there, there wasn't really an encyclopedia of different octopus species. There wasn't really that many resources. And I just thought, why, what is going on? Why isn't there that much? Why isn't there a coloring book? Why isn't there, you know, and I didn't really know what to do with it until 2015 you know, comes around and the soul of an octopus comes out. And in the first like three or four pages, you talk about how the octopus has been largely mischaracterized, you know, mis, uh, misconstrued to be uh, a malicious creature throughout history. And I thought it makes sense why there weren't that many resources created because there wasn't really a market mm -hmm. for octopus things. Um, and it's as a result of the way kind of like the media portrayed them through Hollywood films, through literature, through. And so I was like, we have to change this story because they're one of the most incredible creatures on this planet. And so I took the torch of the soul of an octopus and I kind of brought it online in a sense um, where I was just like, we have to share this. If I could bottle up Simon Montgomery's love and her admiration and her ability to make people fall in love with an animal that they've never met. And, and move that into a digital space, then I've done it. You know what I mean? Well, you have done it, Warren. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was just as excited to meet you. And mm -hmm. do you remember uh, Phil and, um, and Wilson, who's gone now, but they were just as excited to meet you and they could not believe what you did. You took my old fashioned, you know, print on paper book and brought it to an audience that I, I couldn't reach. I mean, as, as Warren knows, friends out there, I am um, not digitally very, uh, very agile. I mean, I basically poke at the computer like a monkey and hope something happens. But you are a wizard. And what you have done for the octopuses and for so many children who are just like you, mm -hmm. longing for a way to to connect and feeling that there's something way beyond um, just the, the world on land, way beyond the world of humans alone, that, that creatures in the sea have souls too. And that even vertebrates can think and feel and know, and that when we have a chance to touch just a fraction of, of what they think and feel and know, it, it just enlarges our our hearts and changes your life and makes you a more compassionate person and hopefully makes us better stewards of the ocean than our kind has been of late yeah and we're, we're seeing it happen i'm seeing the um the younger generation fall in love with the octopus um to me i just felt like we needed to present the octopus in a way that um that they truly were which were the superheroes of the sea you know, with like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, you know, with over 300 different species and more that we probably just haven't, you know, kind of uncovered yet, um, depending on where they live in the ocean and they live everywhere, they have these really unique adaptive superpowers that allow them to be masters of their environment. They've figured it out for hundreds of millions of years. And the ones that you see today, you know, they have this really, these unique gifts or these superpowers um, 
And so like, you know, uh, the sand octopus that can't change colors, uh, but it can blow itself a foot underground and secrete a mucus to reinforce the walls around it and then create a ventilation shaft with one of its arms to kind of burrow underground because its environment is sand and it needed to learn how to thrive in that environment. And so I think there's a lot that kids and adults can learn alike when presented in a way that is inspiring, um, that's, uh, you know, with Octonation, our mission is to inspire wonder of the ocean by teaching the world about octopuses. And that's what we aim to do is just, you know, get people curious and then inspire wonder and inspire more wonder to the point where they're just like, wait a minute, you know, because, you know, what I, what I saw with a lot of um, marketing on some, some of the organizations was, I don't know how much longer us as just a human race can stand the constant barrage of just like um, showing the mistreatment of animals. Like if you're constantly shown on social media, like video after video, I was just like, you know, anger isn't a sustainable way to foster someone's love of the world and the, the um, just the environment or anything like that. Fear is not sustainable emotion for people to feel. But what love is sustainable. And if you give people that, then they can kind of light their own torch and then carry that torch forward. And that's the gift that you gave to me with Solve an Octopus was I was like, oh, I get it. Um, now we need to bring that torch in this positivity that we have about the octopus, about you know the environment or the world. You know, we first have to anchor people's deep found appreciation to something that's that's beautiful, that's wonderful, um, before we can expect for them to just care, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, all, all totally on their own. Right. When you have these really cool, you know, devices and these um, things that distract you on a daily basis. And there's everything that's pulling your attention away from, you know, kind of like the earth and what's going on out mm -hmm. there. The natural world and yeah, the real, like, what yeah. I call the real world, which which is the real world. But you're using these devices to connect us, not separate us from the mm -hmm. real world, which is part of your genius and the genius and the power that we have as the octo nation. And, and, and um, I see us carrying it on. To, I see us carrying it on. We've it more than now either, as you point out, you know when by 2050, there will be more uh, plastic in the ocean than fish. And when the ocean is warming faster than the land due to global climate change. But what makes us care, of course, is connecting with individuals that we get to know, to animals who think and feel and know and care about them. And that's just how, how human psychology works. But you've lit that match, you know, you've lit that fire. And um, I, I, it's easy for me to think of one young person um, who instantly uh, octopuses changed her life. And uh, this happened when she was nine years old and she adores you, Warren. <laughs> Let's I, I, pull her up. Yeah, let uh, me this is, this her. Is Heidi. Uh, <laughs> and this And this was, uh, an experience that uh, she sh she got to share with Simon Montgomery. Uh, they had an octopus tea party, and I know that she's going to watch this later. And so Heidi, you inspire me just as much as I inspire you um, with the amount of money that you've raised with um, just your, I love following her on social media um, as well. Uh, just kind of like listening to her navigate her business as a young entrepreneur is just, it's really fun to watch. And so if you have kids, oh, here's my dog. She's just coming oh, to this Hi, Lillian. Good dog, Lillian. Good dog. She's like, hey, hi, sweetie. Good. Um, we're, almost, we're almost finished. We just have to celebrate Octopus Month with the nation real quick. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so um, do you want to do you want to talk a little bit You're about server now? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. You can see his nose. Yeah. Here, let me there. <laughs> no. we'll Thurber now. Hey, Thurber, what's going on? You. There's a hilarious video of Thurber dancing that I've seen that I don't think the world. <laughs> <seen>. <laughs> oh. But do you want to talk about Heidi real quick? Yeah. Just, well, Heidi? Heidi and I met when she was nine. She's now 13. We are 50 years apart in age, and yet we are BFFs. So I had just given a talk on. Um, the octopus scientist, I believe. I, I wrote one for younger kids and, and then I wrote one for little itty bitty kids mm -hmm. called um, Inky's Amazing Escape. 
and I'd spoken at her school and she came up and she said, I'm so in love with octopuses and I, I want to do something to help them. What, what can I do? And there was at that time, um, I think the Octo Nation was very, very new, but there was no actual charity working to help octopuses per se. Mm-hmm. But I pointed out to her that the sea really needs our help and that anything she could do to benefit any of the creatures in the sea would, would benefit octopuses. And so she started making jewelry, started making um, reusable cloth bags to use instead of uh, instead of uh, those, those horrible single-use plastic bags, which uh, some towns have banned. Make, she makes jewelry. She makes T-shirts. Mm-hmm. And she uses every bit of the proceeds uh, to for New England Aquarium's conservation programs. At first, they were going to the sea turtle um, hospital in Quincy. And now she's donating them directly to the aquarium. So it will benefit all sea creatures. And she's rebranded her stuff that used to be called Heidi's helping hands. And now it's called making Mm -hmm. waves. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, God bless her. This is one kid who's 13. (laughs) This is someone who cannot drive, cannot vote, uh, cannot join the army, but look at, look at what she's doing. And I like to say that children are not just the leaders of tomorrow. They are the leaders of today. And Heidi is one of those leaders. And I am so proud to know what she's doing. And she's just one kid. I mean, Mm -hmm. there, there are other kids out there doing amazing, amazing stuff. And that is what gives me hope on, on the days, you know, when you get, when you get the news that, you know, over 20 species of creatures, including the ivory bill woodpecker, declared extinct. I mean, that just makes you want to jump off a bridge. But if you jump yeah. off a bridge, do it into the ocean where you're likely to meet an octopus and cheer you right up. No, no, <laughs> and somebody, and somebody <laughs> just mentioned on that note, October is also Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. That Pierce oh boy, with- there you go. <laughs> well, you know, in in um, Soul of an Octopus, my my friend Anna told me about how animals at the aquarium meeting them getting to know them helped her through the suicide of one of her friends and i just this week got an email from another teenager who wrote me the same thing that meeting octopuses through soul of an octopus getting to know um athena and octavia and Kali and Karma, just knowing the incandescence of these creatures' lives, their unexpected lives under the sea, makes you want to stay on this beautiful planet as long as you can. And that, if that's the only thing I've I've done with my life, it will have been worth it. And this is what you are doing every day, Warren. And this is what all of us members of the nation are carrying forward. We are carrying forward that that incandescent joy of knowing what these creatures can do. How can you not want to stay alive and want to live one more day and find out one more thing and spend one more day, one more hour, one more year, one more lifetime if we were given it? to explore this world. Octopuses really, they, they personify the wonder and awe that washes over us like an ocean every day. I mean, I, again, I could just listen to I talk all, all day. I mean, obviously the soul of Octonation is, is the soul of Cy Montgomery from the standpoint of just the way that you look at things. And I always tell people, Cy Montgomery can make you fall in love with something that you've never met, that you've never seen, just by talking about it. There's this, and I, I feel that same way with with octopuses. I mean, I write about octopuses um, almost every single day on our Instagram account still. That's still my voice there. And what I've done was I remember seeing all this really complicated research in science and, um, and buying access to these articles. And then 
looking at them and being like, okay, how would I explain this to a really close friend that didn't know anything about the octopus? How would I, how would I get them interested in something that they, they didn't know about? And so I've been writing um, since 2015 a whole lot uh, on, about octopuses. And to this day, um, like I'm astounded by things that they're discovering, by behaviors that they have. Um, I wrote this long thing about the, the bobtail squid, the fact that it, um, it kind of like uh, messes with its own circadian rhythm uh, from the sense that they have this bioluminescent bacteria that they kind of like uh, live their lives with that kind of light the way for them at night. And then when they go to sleep, they expel that bioluminescent um, kind of like uh, bacteria that lives with them uh, so that they can go to sleep in the seabed so that predators can't see them. And uh, as they're sleeping, it kind of repopulates. And when they when they come back, you know, at night, they're this glowing ball of, you know, bobtail squid. And just thinking about all of these things, how could you not be enamored um, with just all these really unique skill sets that they have uh, and just want to share that? There's so, so much uh, that we still have yet to uncover. And I look at um, Monterey Bay Re Research Institute. I look at uh, NOAA. I look at Schmidt Ocean. I look at all these accounts that are are really discovering things that we've never seen before uh, in the ocean, like that one octopus that uh, watches over her eggs for what four years. Oh my gosh, isn't that compelling? Yeah, so you know, that points out. Uh, you make such a good point. We love we love octopuses for their strangeness, but we also love them love them for the sameness, the connection mm -hmm. that we have. I mean, the bobtail squid. What is he doing? He's basically turning off the light at night. Mm -hmm. And then his alarm clock goes on in the morning. He sets it because he's, you know, and what about this this devoted mother octopus? We can relate to that whether we're parents or not. And I, I think that's like creating a wonderful bridge that you can always find a sense of connection. Um, it helps if the animal that you're connecting with looks you in the face, recognizes your face and remembers who you are. Um, it always meant so much to me when I would go back to the aquarium every week and each of the octopuses that I knew, whether it was, you know, Octavia or Kali or Karma or Sai or Rudy or any of the others, they would remember me and they would act differently to me because they remembered me. So we were friends. But one of the reasons that that friendship meant so much was that they were so different from us. And the, the, the same way that, you know, your, your spirit grows when you know a person who is more different from yourself. Imagine you're separated from octopuses by half a billion years of evolution, and yet we can still reach out and find that connection. Yeah, I always say too, when it comes to the the amount of time that they've spent on this earth, I'm just like, us as humans, we're really a blip on the radar in, in comparison to what has been on this planet and and things that they've had to figure out long before we had to evolve to figure out how to respond to things. They've survived mass extinctions that have happened on this planet. Um, and just, I mean, just imagine like that sort of intelligence, that sort of, um, you know, they've been here. They, 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 they've they see what's going on, right? So um, we have some people. <laughs> oh, Jamie says we have matching shirts. Yes, uh, Jamie's been a huge supporter of Octonation uh, and our, our merch collection. Just a, a quick a story about this and just kind of how we imagine passing on the excitement and the wonder of different octopuses is um, we have this series. Uh, this is the Octobarista series yes, where we have species-specific octopuses with different types of coffee. So we figured... You know, if we could pair, you know, different species like the blue ringed octopus with, um, you can see right here, sorry, that she has a, a skull and crossbones. <laughs> yeah. So because, clever. <laughs> um, blue ringed octopuses, for those of you who don't know, they uh, produce um, tetrodotoxin, which is about a thousand times more uh, lethal than cyanide. Um, they're one of the most deadliest creatures on the planet. But don't let that scare you. They've, they're only really responsible for, for three deaths of human lives. And that's because I think they were picked up or, or something like that. But they're not malicious or aggressive creatures. Um, they're really smart. They're efficient hunters. Um, and they're not looking to, to mess with us as humans. They kind of like. But we, we wanted to create this series because we wanted to showcase the biodiversity that is within the octopus species. You know, we have this one. We um, just created also a, a new series called the... Um, 
a sweet treat. This is the California two spot. Uh, and so it has its identifying factors like this chain link uh, blue ring. Uh, and so we want to incorporate um, identifying species, you know, markings with just kind of like nostalgic everyday um, things so that people can be like, that's me in an octopus. Like I wear glasses or this octopus, you know, you're that California two spot because, you know, you, you like to wear shades all the time. Or, you know, you're Dreamy Danny because Dreamy Danny is just dreamy. This is the Caribbean reef octopus um, with a, a, a like a orange dreamsicle. Um, you have a, a day octopus, <laughs> um, Bomb Betty with, uh, you know, a, like a bomb pop looking thing. And then uh, Krabby Chris, which is a mimic octopus with a crabsicle. And so just we're, we're really trying to think of, you know, fun ways that we can bridge um, teaching kids and adults about species, getting them excited, um, you know, having people go, hey, where did you get your shirt? And then them being like, oh, you know, I got it from Octonation, but then being able to say it's a mimic octopus. You know, I really like the mimic octopus because, you know, see, they can seemingly mimic other ocean creatures. And, you know, it just starts this conversation out in the wild that might not normally happen um, as a result of us making it available for people to kind of wear and talk about their passions. And so because we're an educational organization, I thought, you know, what can we do so that people can wear something so that they can educate their friends, their families, their loved ones about their passion and their love, you know, um, the they're... stickers are great for kids, yeah. water bottles. The minute Heidi saw the stickers and in that picture, I had laid out all of the Octonation stickers. She was like, oh my gosh, I've got to put them on my water bottle. And that's what kids look at at school. So yeah, she's and... educating all kinds of people, thanks to Octonation. And it really starts a conversation like, well, why is that octopus um, eating the dream sickle? And then <laughs> it's just perfect. Yeah. And we can't do this alone. Michelle says maybe octopus therapy for mental health will soon be a thing. And that's a, a thought that I thought of like counselors um, using the octopus uh, in like early learning or education to talk about how the octopus is so adaptable. Um, so, you know, that, you know, if it does lose an arm, if you do get a scrape or a cut, you know, don't worry, it's going to heal. You know, sometimes it's good as new. Uh, and uh, and I think the octopus can be used as that pillar creature for a whole lot more. So if you are a counselor uh, and you're thinking about incorporating the octopus as uh, an animal to use as an example, do it. I mean, they have uh, this incredible ability to them. There's so many words that I associate with them that are, you know, master healers that are, mm -hmm. you know, um, magnificent. Um, I mean, there's just so many words. Uh, and they, they reach out. I mean, they're an example to show you what reaching out can do and being flexible. You mm -hmm. know, they, they're, you know, they can pour their whole body through a tiny opening. Yeah. These and are they, all great things that we, we can learn from, from them. And they can move their, their arms in an infinite amount of ways. That's why when um, Disney was uh, animating uh, Hank for, mm -hmm. um, uh, I believe it was Finding Dory, their software broke because it was such a complicated <laughs> movement that they had to develop new software to, to animate an octopus um, because of just their infinite amount of, of abilities, the, the software couldn't compute or couldn't handle it. And so they actually had to formulate new software for that character, which is something that most people don't know. So it's just, it's just a really incredible thing. I know, Sai, um, you have a hard stop and we have to, to, to um, end this. I mean, we, we both say that we can talk to each other all day. And we do. We, we do through email. We'll reach out anytime something happens or whenever there's an opportunity. But for those of you watching who want to share the octopus in your own way to your own friends and family or incorporate it in curriculum or work with Octonation in some way, definitely reach out. Um, we'd love to help you or, or help you come up with ideas. Um, in order to facilitate that. If you want me to speak to uh, classrooms or anything like that, I've worked with Nepris, uh, which is an online learning platform that brings education into classrooms. I think this past year we, we went live to over like 1500 students from 60 classrooms. Um, and so we're working as hard as we can given the current circumstances of you know everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, so yes, so we are here for you. And then also something I wanted to bring up too um, that most people aren't really aware of is that we have a blog on Octonation. 
And somebody mentioned where you can get this merch. If you go to octonation.com and click shop here, um, this is where you can get, you know, all of the really cool stickers and things like that. But um, our blog, we have a science, we have science writers and guest bloggers that are covering the latest science. Like um, me and Sai were just talking about this, but um, it was just discovered that male squid will go and find a habitable place for their mate to lay her eggs so that they can, you know, uh, make sure that they're passing on their genes, right? Um, and that no other males have to come around and, or the eggs won't come to fruition or, or, or hatch. Um, and so we write in a really fun and easy to understand way. Uh, so like house hunter, squid edition, male squid search for dwelling. Um, we, we try to write in a way that, that people can understand, that are inspired, and then can go off and um, educate people and say, hey, did you know that, you know, male squid, you know, hang around the female for a while and, you know, find a place for them to lay their eggs? You know, so they do have some paternal instincts or seemingly paternal instincts. And so if you're interested in, in some of that research, definitely uh, check out our blog. Um, Sai? Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, you did this this past year too. I think we rung in World. Uh, I think it was, it was either World Octopus Day or um, Octopus Month. I always appreciate you for even short notice. Like I, I'll tell Sai sometimes. I'll be like, "Hey, can you jump on tomorrow?" And she's like, "Yeah." Hey, I'll, <laughs> I'll do anything to be with you in the nation. So, any any last words? Any parting words for Octopus Month or what sh people should um, should really focus on this month as? as Octonation is sharing octopus information and education everywhere, anything that you kind of want to leave people with? Well, I would say um, let's reach out and use our own superpowers to connect with others, to um, to protect our our oceans where the octopuses live. Because if, you know, if we, if we lose the oceans, we've lost, we've lost the whole planet. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, go out and celebrate. Tell all your Yay. friends. Uh, October is Octopus Month. Um, we'll definitely be giving you a whole lot of content to share. But if you know you want to spend this time, I think on um, our YouTube, we have How to Draw an Octopus with Brian Kessinger, who we're going to do something with this year as well. Um, but if you want to kind of get started earlier and, drive, uh, and draw an octopus, go for it. Go have fun. But thank you, Sai. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and looking forward to, to sharing this month with you. Great. Happy October. Awesome. Bye, everybody.